Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide, with the fifth installment of my Getting Started Guides. In the first, I covered enlisting, buying, and installing Star Citizen. In the second, I covered the most basic key bindings to move out and about in the universe, including how to customize those key bindings. In the third, I talked about the general structure of landing zones and stations. And in the fourth, I talked about flying and took a short trip from planet to orbital station. Now, in the fifth and last of this first set of tutorials, I'm going to talk about your starting career choices and missions. Now, there are careers that aren't really suited at the start because they require seed capital to be earned first. One is mining, which with the exception of hand mining, requires the money to buy a prospector or a rock and a ship to transport it in. And then there is commodity training, which requires a transport ship large enough size to be profitable and enough money to fill it with goods. So at the start, you're going to want to earn money without having to upfront money that you don't yet have. So that primarily means missions. But first, I want to talk about organizations and reputations. So I'm going to open up the Mobiglass and check this Delphi app here. And of course, as a brand new player, I have nothing yet, but that will change. I successfully do work for an organization that gets me reputation, and that is one way to get more challenging reputation missions. UEC and reputation are the main tokens of advancement in the game. So let's look at missions under the Contract Manager app here. Right at the top are delivery missions. Each planet in the Stanton system has their own delivery company, although there is some crossover. Here at Microtech, it is Unified Distribution Management, or UDM. Other places, it might be Ling, or Redwin, or Kovalex. The first mission is one package from one location to another without any expected trouble. In general, the economics of missions is that they are priced based on how much time they will take, plus the degree of risk. If it starts to get to five digits, it's time to think critically about why it is that valuable and whether you are getting in over your head as a beginner. Search usually involves collecting cargoes with some degree of risk. The Starfarer is a large and complicated ship to find something in with lots of places for enemies to hide, and Zeta Prolonite is on a tight timer or it self-destructs, potentially fatally if it's in your hands at the moment. So you need to have worked on your speed and efficiency for those. Probe deployment is quick and easy, and the payment reflects it. Moving on to investigation, the first one is also on a Starfarer, but even higher rewards. So I'll be suspicious that there may be armed opposition, and I don't have a gun on myself yet. The second seems to be low paying for the amount of time, but these caves seem to have a lot of collectible items and hand mineable gems in them. So there is a good secondary pad if you bring along a multi-tool with a mining attachment and a big backpack to carry things in. But I don't have that backpack yet, so I'll have to get that first. Bounty hunting is one of two space combat career paths. The other is accepting the various combat assist beacons that the game will be generating. A downside of the bounty hunting path is that for each increase in level, you have to pay them for the right to elevate to that level, which is not the case in the combat assistant beacons. It would be interesting to see how far one could go with bounty hunting in just a stock Mustang, but likely one would want to have a more dedicated fighter ship for that first. The suspect apprehension certificate looks similar to the tracker permit, except that target name seems more like a player name, right? Right. Mercenary involves a number of both ship-to-ship -ship combats and ground combats. The illegal monitors are a good beginning mission that requires quick, efficient thinking, and the security contract evaluation might be a good beginning player if FPS is your thing. But unless you are really good, treat these ones with paying 45000 or more as not being for solo beginners. On the other hand, the mercenary category contains one mission for everyone should take every time they enter the game, just in case. And that is a call to arms. That provides a bonus for every criminal you come across and defeat. Another career path is available to the beginning player is responding to medical rescue beacons. These pay 15000 for just a few moments with a med gun, but be wary. Whatever hostiles that may have incapacitated the victim may well still be there, so you will need to come prepared to first have to defeat or avoid them. Priority also is whatever event is going on right now. In this case, Jump Town, which is either empty or a massive PvP battleground. Take your chances. So that was the general tab, and everything on the general tab is always a legal mission, unless you really screw it up. The personal tab, however, contains both legal and illegal mission. So let's take a look at this first one. 50,000, definitely long, definitely dangerous. But hey, even split three ways on a team, that's a nice payout. Claiming a stake, definitely legal and dangerous. Hacking a common ray, 
no question there. And finally, needing to beat other looters to a stash? Definitely dangerous and illegal. But enough of all this abstract talk, let's pick a beginning mission and walk through it. Let's pick the simplest and quickest one, the one we started with, UDM qualification. So it's off to the hangars, call up our trusty Mustang and off we go. Call up landing control and open the doors to our trusty Mustang and off we go. Call up landing control to open the doors. I call up the contract managers and select missions and it is important that I track the one that I am working on now so that I see the markers for it. It is below the horizon, so I quantum to an orbital marker that would get me a clear line of sight to it, then quantum the moon to pick up is on, and then quantum to the outpost itself, which always ends about 20 kilometers from the destination. Just like for the stations, I aim for a flyover, so I have some wiggle room if I don't slow down fast enough. If I was flying big craft or needed servicing, I would land on the pads, but since I have neither, I just land on the ground near the door. Use the I key to turn off the engines, but leave the shield charged. Normally leaving the door open would be inviting trouble, but the Mustang container does not get access to the inside of the ship. There's the package, but let's look around. Ooh, this one looks interesting. A backpack. Arm protection and a helmet. The backpack will be handy in the future to be able to hold more things, but a backpack needs chest armor. So I'll just keep the backpack and put the chest armor on my shopping list. So let's get the box and load it up. Oops, forgot to crouch and knocked myself out. But hold on. Sometimes if you knock yourself out by failing to duck or slipping on the stairs, you will regain consciousness on your own. So let's also load up our backpack and let's be on our way. Interact with the ship to enter and use I to re-energize the thrusters and let's get out of here. Quantum to the orbital marker to get to the right side of the planet and then quantum again back to Microtech. And then quantum to our drop off at New Babbage. Now let's make our way to the rooftop landing pads. New Babbage is dotted all over with these rooftop pads that are often used for delivery points. Whoa, that was close. Yow, a pad rammer. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen one of those. Maybe that Aurora owner was mad that I'm now saying the Mustang is the better starter ship. And no, the Mustang is not that much more durable than the Aurora. It's that it wasn't a particularly competent pad rammer. Not only do they need two tries, but they mostly hit the building, not me. But I've lost a wing and a tailpiece, and this can make a craft a bit hard to fly. So I'll just go ahead, deliver the package, finish getting my reward. So I'm going to leave the wing up so it doesn't try to flip the craft, and then I'm going to make my way slowly, not using the cruise control, over to the spaceport, which for New Babbage is identified at night by three sets of four red lights and four sets of three white lights. Call the tower, and here is an example of a medical rescue beacon coming in. Gently bring the Mustang in, and they'll fix it up good as new. I hope that pad rammer is enjoying their time in jail. Not. Since I'm here, let's retrieve the backs and then use my earnings to build it and the arms I found into a decent armor set by adding torso and leg armor. There's not a lot of places for armor at New Babbage, but in the commons, the Schubert Interstellar kiosk has a few pieces. And while I'm waiting for the train, look, now I have a whole set of new missions paying 8,000 credits for three boxes. And if I look at the Delphi app, UDM now considers me a junior runner. It's a start. So I quick buy some matching torso armor and put it on. And now in inventory, I get an extra bit of storage for the chest pockets. I put the backpack on, I get a whole lot of extra storage. Let's put some basics in there. Now note, I can move the backpack into local storage and then I can put it back on and there comes back the stuff. It's still in the backpack. So I can use these backpacks like go bags and have everything in a single thing to grab. So let's add some matching leg armor, and then when I put that armor, another bunch of storage shows up for the leg pockets. So then I head over to center mass and buy my first rifle. My preference is the P4 along with a silencer and plenty of ammunition. Now the armor has connectors for carrying two rifles, but I usually head out with only one because I want to have some place to put an even better rifle that I might find from somebody who, you know, doesn't need it anymore and a suppressor and several clips of ammunition, and here I am all kitted out and ready for many different things. And that is how you build your initial kit. Some found things, with some purchase things. 
And now, since I promised I would keep this short, I'm going to not be going into details of the ship giveaway, particularly since winning a massive multiplayer ship isn't really a new thing for a player with, you know, just a Mustang or something. So I'll just call the secret word as the model name of the backpack and arm armor that I found. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Danny Raymond for Ray's Guide.